I am Dr. Varun. I am going to present a case of a recurrent pleural effusion on behalf of our pulmonology unit ICH. A child is around 5 years old and her synopsis goes like this. A child was admitted in 2019 at Mumbai for fever of 2 weeks duration and was found to have pleural effusion. The pleural effusion was straw colored. However, both fever and TB workup turned negative. Contact was also negative. However, she was started on ATT empirically for 6 months following which the symptoms resolved. She was again admitted in 2020 in Mumbai, this time with abdominal distension and ascites. The ascetic fluid again was straw colored. However, TB workup again turned out to be negative and she was empirically started on category 2 ATT, suspecting relapse, following which the symptoms resolved. She was again admitted in 2021, this time at Velour, with massive ascites associated with pleural effusion, which was again straw colored. Again, TB workup done was negative. She was referred to ICH sus uh, with suspicion of abdominal TB bar romantal cyst. On admission, uh, her symptomatology goes like this. There was no fever, cough or breathlessness. There was no pain, hematomesis or change in bowel habits. No loss of weight or trauma was recorded. She had a minimal loss of appetite. Otherwise, she was developmentally normal and immunized up to one and a half years of age. There was no family history of similar issues or contact with any TB patient. On examination, she was alert and a very cheerful child. Her weight and height were between 15th and 50th centiles. She had minimal paler. There was no lymphadenopathy. Sister examination showed reduced air entry over the right hemithorax associated with stony dullness. Abdominal distension was present with shifting dullness, also associated with dilated veins and hepatomegaly. Other system examinations were essentially normal. At this point, clinically, we had the uh, following differential diagnosis in our mind. One, tuberculosis. Two, malignancy. 3. Corrective tissue disorder, 4. Omental cyst, 5. Pancreatitis, and parasitic infection to be last. Uh, how did she proceed further with investigations? Let's see. We can see from the uh, initial uh, blood counts, renal function test, and liver function that all the issues related to kidney, liver, and uh, uh, cardiac were normal. And uh, LFT alone showed minimal uh, hypoalbuminemia of 3.3. X-ray shows uh, right-sided pleural effusion with also massive ascites. Her fluid analysis was done. Both ascetic and pleural fluid were straw colored. Malignant cells with both were negative. Eosinophils, none were recorded in both ascetic and pleural fluid. CB naught done in ascetic fluid, pleural fluid, and also RGJ CB naught were negative. Amylase done uh, in ascetic fluid, pleural fluid, and also blood were normal. ADA was also normal. What else investigation she underwent? Echo was done, which showed a minimal fluid in the posterior part. She underwent CT abdomen, which showed only a localized ascites. There were no nodes, no ileocecal thickening or omental cyst. Uh, at this point, this child was referred to gastroenterologist, and with no further clues, she had to undergo a laparoscopic biopsy, which again showed no granuloma or caseation or no malignant cells. She also underwent a rheumatological workup, which was negative for ANA, C and K, and P and K. So again, at this point, our diagnosis, TB became unlikely because CB not turned negative in all samples. Malignancy is almost uh, again ruled out because there were no malignant cells present. Connective tissue disorder, again, ANA, CNK, PNK, everything turned negative. Omental cyst, CT could not find out the omental cyst. Pancreatitis again became unlikely because amylase lipase, everything turned out to be normal and CT did not reveal any pancreatitis. Parasitic infection became unlikely because uh, eosinophils were not elevated. So, uh, with this scenario, the child was uh, shifted to pulmonology, uh, came to our pulmonology OP at this point only. Uh, we just uh, directly went ahead and uh, did both pleural fluid and acidic fluid analysis. This time, we got this kind of a sample, this kind of a sample. And on the right side, we can see there is triglycerides of 262, which was, now, which was not done anywhere. With the, these results, we proceeded on to the next investigation. What is this investigation? Namely, lymphangiosynthigraphy. What did this result turn out to be? Now, here's the result. Though it looks complex, I'll try to simplify it. Uh, on the right, uh, the dye is injected in the right lower limb. We can see it on the right lower limb. We can see that on the left side lower limb, the dye is taken in the ankle nodes, popliteal nodes, inguinal nodes, Whereas on the right side, this dye gets blocked in the ankle nodes itself. It did not go to the popliteal nodes, nor did it did not go to the 
uh, inguinal nodes suggestive of some block in the inguinal uh, lymph node pathway which was again given in the reports suggestive of uh, microscopic lymphovenous shunts at multiple levels and uh, no evidence of flow from the uh, flow of lymph from the site of injection in the right lower limb which gave us the diagnosis of a possible lymphatic malformation which is probably congenital in this child moving on to the discussion part uh kyla society is defined as a non infectious extravasation of a milky fluid with a triglyceride level of 110 mg per deciliter the primary cause results from malformation of lymphatic vessels atresia or uh, lymphangiomatosis secondary causes include external compression due to mal rotation incarcinated hernia uh, lymph fluid enlargement or malignancy rarely it can be caused by trauma or accidents or child abuse also Chylothorax is the presence of a lymphatic fluid in the pleural space second to leakage from thoracic duct complications due to thoracic and esophageal surgery as well as hematological malignancies uh, result to chylothorax also primary or congenital chylothorax involves multiple lymphatic vessel anomalies which is associated with many congenital anomalies in neonates miscellaneous causes of chylothorax includes cirrhosis tb sarcoidosis amyloidosis and filariasis also how we diagnosis the diagnosis is obtained by abdominal paracentesis the point here is if the patient is being orally fed the fluid has a milky appearance otherwise it is chocolate possibly this is the reason because everywhere previously and even in our initial admitting unit the child was kept in a fasting state before undergoing both pleural and aseptic fluid analysis whereas when the child came to our pulmonary op dental we directly proceeded with the uh, the pleural fluid and aseptic fluid analysis that time the child was actually fed and we got that milky fluid appearance uh, this chyle contains fat globules which get stains with sudan reds and it is lymphocytic with 70 to 90% lymphocytes and a triglyceride level of 110 mg per deciliter with predominance of chylomicrons the imaging modality of choice is the one which we did which includes lymphocytography by injection of a technetium 99 dextran or technetium 99 labeled sulfur colloid what is the literature say the simultaneous occurrence of uh, chyla societies with chylothorax is a very rare association uh, in infancy trisomies and nunan syndromes have been associated because of uh, lymphatic abnormalities joseph plummer in his uh, article said that due to penetrating trauma uh, the effusion and uh, effusion of chyle through transplantic uh, lymphatic channels and also chyla societies associated which is similar to meek syndrome rabi in his uh, study reported a 3 year old boy who developed both chyloperitoneum and uh, chylothorax because of paradoxical tuberculosis reaction lava in his one of his reports uh, he so he had presumed that tb is the result of both chylothorax and chyloperitoneum but actually according to us it was tb was presumed to be wrong because of high ada levels so probably after long research we found that this child is very interesting for us uh, what does the treatment look like the treatment is uh, if whenever there is no surgical cause is primarily conservative paracentesis in, in fact repeated paracentesis for uh, relieving of symptoms the goal of therapeutic approach is to maintain nutrition and to produce uh, pro- flow of chyle should be maintained chronic loss of chyle leads to anemia hypoproteinemia hypolipidemia and malnourishment low fat high protein diet along with mct should be initiated because mcts are directly absorbed without portal vein and lymph flow we had also started this child on uh, mct diet following which her symptoms have gradually reduced in case of refractory cases we can try octreotide so what did we learn from our child first thing the smile simultaneous occurrence of chylus ascites with chylothorax a very rare association pleural fluid triglycerides will be of immense value in diagnosing of chylothorax and chylus ascites nowhere previously in our child they had under, uh, they had uh, ordered for triglycerides the triglyceride level of more than 110 itself prompted us towards the diagnosis and third thing not all stockalot or tb in all our previous uh, attempts since the pleural fluid acid fluid was stockalot they had treated like tb fourth point the color of chylus fluid varies on fasting or in fed state thank you one and all thank you uh, for finishing well on time with excellent slides and good use of animation and not over use of that that's very good uh, dr varun thank you very much and thank let us Please stop the screen share and uh, the last question.